Well, hello, shiny, crafty people. It's Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. I want to share something with you that I saw, I don't know, like two years ago, and I don't even remember where I originally saw it, but somebody was making uh, bags like this, first out of fabric, and then someone else said, oh, you can actually use an old t-shirt for that, and they just sort of uh, cut it to, to work. And so I actually tried that. It's crazy. I tried it with a... a moisture wicking stretch shirt from a, an event called the amazing race for charity you may have seen me wear shirts like this is an event that i created in my town and this is literally like a shopping bag made from a shirt the bottom edge has been sewn and then just the sleeves have been chopped off and the neck cut bigger oh my goodness this is actually such an easy and fun idea i want to tell you a little bit about what you would need to worry about as you do this because the first thing i did is i saw it and i said oh i'm going to go home and cut up an old shirt of mine now um it may not be obvious on video maybe video is slimming but i wear an extra large unisex or men's shirt regularly and i tried it first i just cut up a shirt i'm going to show you i cut up this uh shirt and it's enormous in fact if i were to sew this into a a bag it would be such a huge shopping bag that if you put anything of any weight in it this thing would just stretch out you'd have to carry it up on your shoulder and it would hang down almost to your knee so an extra large or a large shirt probably is not the right size in fact what i found worked best is this is a small unisex size shirt and you can see how much bigger it is than the standard bag so uh, if you're looking for a regular shopping size bag, you might need to even go to the thrift store or go to your kids or grandkids hand-me-downs and try to find some smaller uh, shirts that you can do. So even like a youth shirt would probably make more sense. And in fact, this is fun. Uh, my, my partner, Brad, happens to be a runner. He runs a lot. I don't ever understand... Um, because I don't see a reason to run unless something's chasing me. But sometimes he does races where he gets shirts like this, which are already have the sleeves cut off. And in fact, so this one, I can just sew across the bottom and I've already got a bag that I can put things through the sides or the top and that would be great. This is a shirt that he doesn't really love as much just because of the material or something he doesn't like on it. Maybe it's a not a good size. I'm gonna stitch across the bottom. I'll show you that at the end of this video. Um, but you could also go get other shirts, t-shirts, moisture wicking shirts. And I want to show you something I did on this particular one, which is the videos that, that are the uh, person that I saw before who made a video a couple years ago, just sort of cut the edges off and left these raw edges. But I thought that didn't look so good. So if you'll notice mine, I went ahead and folded over and stitched at least a stitch on that so that it would be that it would at least be sort of finished on all of those sides. Now, this is not a material that would um, ravel or anything, unlike a t-shirt material tends to pull and just turn a corner anyway. So it's not necessarily required, but why don't we go to the cutting table and I'll show you how to lay this out. And I'm gonna show you um, how to, to just stitch across the bottom for one of them, but I also wanna show you how we would actually do it a little differently um, to make it a little more like a standard bag with some gussets and that kind of thing, all right? So join me at the cutting table. All right, so here at the table, like I said, I've got this is already a tank top and I'm gonna lay it out. And there's two options. You literally could just sew right across the bottom edge, but I'm gonna turn mine inside out so I get the seam on the inside. And luckily this shirt has seams on the sides, but if you get a tube shirt where they've just used a tube of material, um, you can decide differently. Um, you'll have to lay it out flat to get where the edges are, where the sides are, if that makes sense. All right, so I've laid this out, and then I'm going to mark across where I want my uh, my seam to go. Now, you could use a regular bag as an example if you were worried about sizing. You might say, okay, I want it to be about this particular size or whichever you want. So here's one of the reasons why you don't want to make them too long. Look at how enormous that is. Ooh. And it's got a lot of stuff in it. The shorter ones actually worked out a lot better. All right, back. So I'm actually going to use a measuring tool here. And I'll go across, and I'm going to just draw my line. 
Now you could, I'm gonna decide here like four inches from that bottom edge and I'll do the same thing at the top. And I'm just gonna draw a line that I'm gonna sew on. And that worked out just fine. And then I'll come back and pin it so that it doesn't move. And what I wanna make sure doesn't move is it doesn't move this way, right? Where it stays even. So if I pin with the area that I wanna move, it could move along this needle. So what I've gotta do is pin the opposite direction. Since I'm gonna put it in the sewing machine, probably with this side, I'm gonna put the pins um, where I can, I'm gonna start sewing here down. I'll put the pins coming away from that. So that as they sew down the machine, I can pull them out, if that makes any sense. It's important when you're putting pins in that you pay attention to which way you don't want the fabric to stretch because you need to do it um, in a way that the fabric won't be able to stretch along the pin. Right now, this fabric can move this way along the pin, but it can't move this way along the pin. That's what my point is. Now, this is a place where clips would not work because unless I cut the fabric already, I'd rather cut it after I sew it. So I'm gonna stitch along that and then I will um, come back and um, just uh, turn it inside out and it'll be done. Well, I'll have to cut that off too. Now let's say we're doing a version where I wanted to put some gussets in, like I said, because remember on this bag, there are some gussets inside. It pops inside. So what I would need to do for that is, and I'll show you on the inside of this bag. This bag has been made in such a way where there are gussets. See here? Well, to get those into the bag, we basically need to fold part of this inside and then back over itself, and you have to sew along that. And it's easy to do it from the outside like this. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and fold this thing in half, and I'm gonna match up my points where the L, where the underarm matches. And I'll match up the points at the shoulder seam. So that's been done. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna cut off the arms, and we're gonna cut this neck a little bit bigger. Now, how much you cut is really up to you, but I can feel the other part of the neck is in here, is in this area where the neck from the front went. This is where the front neck goes. So I gotta cut at least that much off here, and I'm gonna cut off the edges here. Now you could easily use a rotary cutter, or I'm gonna use scissors because I feel like I can get a little more control of how this is gonna go. And these are gonna be the, arm, the handles Now I will tell you from my experience, don't cut too much of your arm off here because you might find out that the handles go way too deep. You don't need handles that are that tall. And the same thing here in the top, you can always cut more in a minute. You can't uncut the fabric, so don't cut off too much. And I'm gonna round it a little more. So these become our handles and we get a nice wide opening. Once we've done that, we're gonna reopen this. And you can see how much space we have for our handles and how much space we have for that opening at the top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this mark here as my example and fold in that amount. So I'll kind of bring it down just eyeball it, or you can use your measuring device. I'm gonna bring it down here and put a pin here at the bottom in the front and the back on that piece and underneath. This does not have to be anywhere near exact. Seriously, this can be so non-exact because you're just trying to get a gusset in the side. So I will pick this up. You could put a pin here too if you wanted. This might help you if you can put a pin here, only through the one layer of fabric, okay? 
and then do the same thing in the bottom. This just shows where it's going to fold in. And then what I would do is I would grab the pin here and the pin here and fold it until it folds along the line of those two pins. See how that did? And then now I grab these two pin spaces and fold along the pin and then come back. And now we've put in a gusset. And I've got to pin it in place. I don't want it going anywhere because I'm going to sew across it along the bottom. So I'm going to put pin in that to hold it. And then I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the other side. And once I've done that, we can, and I'll pin at the top here too, by the way, even though I don't need it, but I want to hold it in place. I'm just moving one of these pins over. And take out those other pins. And I'll do the same thing on the other end. Does, do they have to be even? I mean, no, you don't have to worry that much about whether they're even or not. That is completely up to you. Um, how serious do you want this to look? Like, you know, how, how big a deal do you want to put into this? Top and bottom. Again, all the way down. And this pin is literally just to get a marker. That's the only reason you're putting a pin there. So I wouldn't even worry about whether it goes through a heavy amount of the fabric. So again, I'll, I'll grab the two top pins and fold back until it folds to the bottom pins. Grab the two top pins and fold it back. Perfect. Now here you have to decide how much do you, how tall you want this bag to be because it's quite possible that you could make the bag just too long. I think the one I made before was really too long. So I'm gonna come along here and look again at what a regular plastic bag might be like and realize that, wow, I might want it a little longer than this, but not a lot. So I'll come in here and mark this uh, along this point. And when I do this, I'll probably put some more pins in it to make sure. Now, I'm gonna do a French seam that'll bounce all this back inside, so I'm not worried about what this looks like, because you're not gonna see that black line at all. I will put a few more pins in here to hold this properly. And then, like I said from before, this is a very stretchy fabric, so you're probably gonna wanna be a little extra careful with how, many, how you pin it and when you sew it. So let me go show you this at the sewing machine and how this is gonna all come together. All right, let's go over the sewing machine. All right, so here at the machine, I have my piece done where it's uh, been pinned together. And I'm just gonna very carefully go along and sew this together. Now, this is a stretchy fabric and you might want a stretch needle or use something like that. I don't worry about it as much because this is not, this is a utilitarian project. No one's gonna wear it. The biggest thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I have a very short stitch length because um, this is gonna get a lot of stretch and pull. It's the other reason why I'm gonna do a French seam on this because I wanna make sure that this is really held in there. I don't want my groceries falling out the bottom of this bag. It's the other reason why I cut so much off of the bottom edge of this bag is because I don't want people thinking if I give this to someone, I don't want them thinking they can just pile every bit of their groceries in here and overstretch the material. So um, now that I've done that part, I can go ahead and trim off. And I'll just do that while we're sitting here uh, because we're gonna get back to the sewing machine. I'm gonna trim off relatively close to the bottom of this stitch. So probably about a quarter of an inch because I'm gonna turn this in and put a French seam in it. That means we're basically gonna turn this inside out and sew from the other side and it'll trap this seam inside. This, all of this raw material will get trapped inside uh, and it won't be seen. So it's a French seam typically is done from the right side of the fabric and then stitched again from the wrong side of the fabric. And when it's stitched from the wrong side of the fabric, it then holds the seam in place. All right, so what I will do is I will turn this raw edge here, I'll turn it inside out, take a few more pins out so that I've got all the pins out of here. We'll turn this inside out. Now it's important that I point out these stitches in the bottom. Now, because of the way that that seam worked here in the bottom, I've got to really make sure I push my material right into the corner 
because I'm going to fold this and stitch it over. And in fact, I told you I would do a French seam on this, and it worked well on the other fabric I tried this on before I made it. But I will tell you, one of the problems is that this is going to be a little difficult getting all of this fabric to roll the way I want it to. So to get that, I'm going to very carefully fold this over so I can put my French seam in. But probably what I should do instead is come back on the front side and show you a little different method. So what I'm going to do a little differently here is I'm just going to fold this over twice and then stitch it. Um, and then I'll show you on something else how to do a French seam. I'll show you um, on that other, um, that other one. So I'm going to fold this over twice. And just get a good seam here at the bottom. A lot of this is because I put that gusset in and that gusset's going to make it very hard to do a French seam. So instead I will roll this over twice to fold that in. And then I'll put a second seam on this because I really want it to be strong. So I'm folding over that material that I just, uh, the seam that I just made and folding it under. Luckily, this is a nice stretch material. It would work on most t-shirt type material. Um, this is a moisture wicking uh, material that's not cotton. And then the only other thing I'm gonna do is come back and give it another stitch along the bottom. I want this to be really secured. Now you could use a matching thread that would make this look a little better for your finished product if you chose to, but that made a nice, really clear finished bottom edge that's really not going anywhere when you pile this full of all of your, uh, all of your groceries at the grocery store. Now you could come along what I just did and come back and fold this edge and stitch down. So I'll show you what that would look like. I'm gonna start at a shoulder seam. I think that makes sense. And I'm just gonna fold over a short amount. Now you could double fold this and it would look really clean or you could single fold it. And so what I'm gonna do is just get a little quarter of an inch roll going. And even though this is rounded, it's a stretch fabric. You can straighten it out as you go through and rounding it. And because the entire thing is round, you're just gonna go back to where you started, just the neckline. And if you can get quite a few just old t-shirts that you were going to toss away anyway, it's a great, you can practice this so easily. Now, I think if you were going to like, you wanted to save a t-shirt and wanted to use it in a different way or something important to you, I wouldn't use a t-shirt you really love for this. It's going to get beat up and used. I would use, you know, old utilitarian t-shirts. Uh, but I would take those nice t-shirts and turn them into a t-shirt quilt. And in fact, I'm going to teach you on the channel in a couple of months how to make a t-shirt quilt. And we're done with that one. And then I'm just going to do all the others, the other armholes that way. Now I could stay with black thread because I already have black writing all over this shirt and I think it looks good. I'll do the other ones and then I will um, show you what this looks like finished. All right, so on the other one that I just uh, cut apart, and I'm showing you these in opposite order, uh, I wanted to show you how to do a French seam, and the other one did not work for me to show you a French seam. So in fact, I'm going to um, go ahead and cut, no, oh, I should have left those pins in. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this material off here at the line, and then show you a French seam, because I need to sew first from the front side 
and then come to the back side. The reason I wasn't able to show you a front seam on the other one, if you were, if you were recall from just a minute or so ago, is that um, the other one I had put in a gussets and it didn't work well with the French seam. So I'm gonna show you it on just this version. So I need to sew first from the other side, from the front side, from this side here. So I will come in and line up. I'm gonna fold right at the seam that's already inside there. Right here, there's a seam already. Because this has side seams. So I'm gonna fold that side seam, that makes it really easy. And then I will just line up these two fabrics and sew along the bottom edge using about a quarter of an inch seam. I don't want a real long seam, a real wide seam because that has to all get shoved into the material inside. Now, of course you could pin or clip this. I just had it pinned a minute ago, but I had to unpin it to do this. There's also a very thin fabric. So being such a thin fabric means it's not gonna have a difficulty uh, being in the French seam. Now there are plenty of videos online about how to do a French seam, so I'm not gonna go into the major details of how it works, but I will show you how I'm doing it here. So with a French seam, we've done that just raw edge on the front, on the good side, the side that you want to be so pretty. Um, and what we will do now is turn this inside out and trap all of this material inside of a little bit bigger seam that we do inside. So we will um, turn this inside out. And now we get what would look like if we were sewing, it would look like the outside edge that we want, right? But instead, I'm gonna point that corner out, make sure it really gets all in there. Same for the other corner, really make sure all of that raw edges gets in. And now the raw edges are trapped inside and now I have to stitch them in such a way as to trap them to where you won't see them on the outside. So I go wider than the quarter inch seam that I did before. So I'm gonna go more like a three eighths, almost a half an inch seam and make sure that all of that material gets caught up inside the stitch that we're doing now. So the idea is that all of that material is now over here. So that when I look at it from the other side, it will all have disappeared. Now you may have to go and be a little more careful about how you may even want to iron this. For like, a, if you're doing a, a pillowcase with French seams, you'd really want to make sure you iron it so it's really flat. This is a stretchy material, I'm not as worried. That also adds an extra seam in there so for uh, support because this is something that'll carry groceries. So that when I turn it inside out, now that bottom edge is all clean and it's done. That's a finished piece on the bottom edge. All right, shiny crafty people. All right, shiny crafty people. I've just finished those two bags. I'm gonna show you what they look like. I kind of like them being a little shorter than this a gigantic bag that I made. This one was really, really long. I kind of like having a, a little shorter uh, version. So the idea is that this is the finished one with the gussets you'll see on the sides. Looks more like a traditional uh, plastic shopping bag in that way, has the gussets. Although I did cut the armholes kind of big. And because of that, I feel like maybe it's a little too big that things will slide out. Maybe that's a little too big. You could sew up the side if you wanted to, but you'll see that thick stitch at the bottom edge that went and held it. It's fine. I think the one that was the uh, already a, uh, a, uh, a tank top worked out really well. That bottom edge is nice and clean. And uh, you could do a lot of stuff in here. So if you threw, I mean, I've got stuff in this piece here. You could put some bags and boxes and other things, some facial tissue. You can even go through the arms if you want to. So you've got a good shopping bag here to carry some stuff. The nice part about it is this is made out of really soft, comfortable material. And you could see carrying that as just a, a bag that you carried around anyway. In fact, this one, the sleeves again are so long that because it was already pre-done that way, that um, it's actually probably easier to shove things in from the side um, than it is to shove things in from the other part. But when you're done using it, you literally just fold this up and it goes right back into your, 
it, this is how small it goes and you can put it into your uh, glove compartment or somewhere else. And you got a reusable bag where you didn't have to make it out of other materials, you took it out of something that already uh, existed and what you might be throwing away anyway. So a lot of fun, an easy way to put these together out of old t-shirts. These are out of old race t-shirts. So if you know somebody who's done a lot of 5Ks and marathons and 10Ks, perfect way to turn them into some nice bags that people can use. All right, I'm glad you joined me for this fun little tutorial. And until next time, stay crafty. Bye for now. You know, these are so nice. I might have to start doing more 5K events just to get free t-shirts. Eh, I think I'll just go to the thrift store and I'll walk there instead of running. <laughs>